made a good amount of pixel art in many different styles in the last few years. Today I want to show you some tips and ways to improve your pixel art that can be applied to any style. For a beginner, it's better to start with a limited palette. You don't want to use too many shades when starting because you might end up wasting too much time adding too much color depth and anti-aliasing. And after you put so many colors into an object, all other objects will have to have the same amount of detail to keep it consistent. The overall look of the game is more important than fiddling with details. All the games I'm showing here were made with 16 colors or less. We will look a bit more into palettes later. I'm using Pico 8 to make my games lately, so for now I'll use the standard Pico 8 palette. Let's start with shading. The way you shade an object depends on the material it is made of. For an opaque shading, you just need to imagine the shape of the object and the light source and see where the light should hit the object. A sphere is brighter in the part that is directly facing the light source and it gets darker in the opposite direction. For a metallic object, make it a bit darker on the shadows because it reflects everything around it, including dark objects and shadows. Make the part that's facing the ground a bit brighter as it's reflecting the light from the ground and add a shiny highlight, reflecting the light source itself. For a transparent object, the light will bounce inside of it, so the lower part is brighter. If the object is a light source, usually it will be white on the center and slightly darker on the borders, but it depends on the intensity of the light. You can use dithering to add some textures to an object or to shade between colors. This is useful for big sprites, it makes them look more detailed. Flipping the sprite and zooming in and out gives you a new perspective and it can help you spot mistakes on your sprite. When anti-aliasing, you don't want to just separate one shade from the other with an intermediate shade. Instead, you have to imagine which pixels would have both shades if the sprite had a higher resolution. Let's redraw this ball with bigger 2x2 two two squares. Some squares have 3 pixels of one color, so we will paint it with the predominant color. Squares that have both shades of grey will be painted with the intermediate color. Here is an example with two shades of grey between black and white. The same rules apply for cubes and other shapes. If you're not sure how to shade an object, just search some photos or sprites to use as reference. Keep in mind that while this diagonal light is fine for static objects, for characters the light should come from straight up, otherwise it won't look right once you flip the sprites. Here's the Pico 8 palette separated in shades of red, yellow, green and blue. Usually the darker shades are colder and they get warmer as you increase the brightness. Shifting from blue to yellow is not a strict rule, but light sources like the sun and fire have warm colors, so it's often the best approach. Notice that I left a lot of grey colors in each hue. Grey can be used as a jack of all trades, bridging some colors and helping decrease saturation. If we remove red from the first line, it turns into a purple hue. Removing yellow from the second line makes a nice orange sequence. If you don't want the green to be as warm in the light, swap yellow for grey. Remove the light blue in this line and it turns into shades of grey. This is the palette ordered by hues. Closer hues blend better together. Here gradients that shift brightness and hue. Cold to warm and warm to cold. Using that we can create a lot of shading gradients. 
red, pink and purple are around the same color spectrum, but red is too saturated as an intermediate shade. We can use brown and gray instead. Here are some examples. There's only two shades of green, but with blue, gray and yellow we can shade a green object in many different ways. Even using light blue here works well and gives a very unique look. This sand color is fine between gray and white because they all have low saturation. Another important thing is the context around the sprite. This looks like a green ball when we put it in a dark scene, but it will look like a dark green ball on a lighter background. If you want to make an object look brighter, but you are already using a very intense color, try making the background less so instead. This is also very important to help the player distinguish interactable objects from backgrounds. Backgrounds should either be darker, less saturated, have less contrast, have less detail, or a combination of these techniques. Outlines help with that too. You can use black outlines to make it really pop or outlines in the same color as your object, just darker. You can use outlines to delimit parts of the object too. The darker the line, the more each part will look like a separate object. Now, what about something a little more complex, like a character? Well, basically a complex object is just a combination of many simple objects with one extra step. Each piece of the object can occlude some light on another piece, like a head covering a head. This also applies to ambient light, carved in areas, holes and pieces with many objects around them look darker. Try to consider how much light will reach each part of the object. Is it very exposed or is it hidden behind other stuff? For small details, try to use the pixel's square shape in your favor. Straight lines and diagonals look really clean. And some patterns look really crisp, like these diamond shapes for example, are perfect to make leaves for a bush or a tree. That's all for the basics, the idea here is not to memorize everything and try to do everything at once, it's to open your eyes to things that you maybe didn't notice before. The next time you see a sprite, you can look at some of these factors to try to understand what makes it good. Now, before you leave to watch another tutorial, try to apply something you learned in this video, no matter how small. You will only truly learn something if you use it in practice. And why not do it right now? Open a sprite editor of your choice and pick a palette. If you're not sure about the palette, you can use the Pico 8 palette we just studied. Let's make a very small sprite, 8x8 or 12x12. 12 12. The nice thing about small sprites is that you have very little to work with, so you have to draw just some key elements. If you make a rabbit or a cat, maybe it's just head and ears. Each pixel is very big, so a small change makes a big difference. Let's use 12x12 12 12 to make a knight. I want you to have a big head to bring more character and a big sword to fight. Just one pixel for the highlight of the helmet is enough to give it volume and a metallic look. For this red ornament, let's shade the back part. I like to leave this pixel here red, so it looks like it's pointing outwards. The armor is a bit darker at the top, because the helmet is blocking some of the light. And it also prevents the head and torso from blending together. And here, some extra pixels to make it more detailed and less flat. Okay, let's make a plant, a slightly tilted leaf with a line in the middle, a leaf on the other side, flat dark green to make it look like it's more on the back, a twig with some darker pixels to help separate it from the leaves and shade under the leaf, and a flower 
with some light at the top of the pedals. As you can see, there's a lot of trial and error involved. Just keep drawing and moving pixels until you're satisfied. If you're not sure how to draw something, try to draw it and later look at some references from other artists to see what you missed. You will learn more from your mistakes if you try things for yourself first. That's it for today. I hope you had as much pain hearing me speak English as I had speaking. <laughs> On the next video we will look into animations. See you next time.